Installing brushless motor on B12 will make your car faster and stronger. It is pretty easy to do and this video will show you how. The item needed is a brushless motor. I used 2430 5800 KV. 35A brushless ESC. I just used some cheap non-brand ESC less than 10 US dollar. The most expensive item needed is the transmitter. Because we cannot use T12 standard transmitter, the price start around 20 US dollar. In this video, I use Dumbo RC X6, but you can use any other brand transmitter. If you already have a transmitter, then the total cost needed is only about 20 US dollar. For batteries, you can use the default battery with a few modifications. But if you want something better, buy a 2S or 7.4 volt LiPo battery. First, we open the body. Open these four screws on the back to remove the deck. Open two screws at the front. Pull the plastic holder, then lift the body slowly like in the video. Be careful not pull the light cable. We unplug it. Then we remove the electronics. Disconnect the servo cable. Open these four screws. Open the two gearbox screws, take off the gear, remove two bolts holding the motor. This is a size comparison between D12 original motor on the left, 370 motor on the center, and the 2430 brushless motor on the right. If you just want to increase the torque, then you can just use 370 motor. It's easier and cheaper. We already done that. 2430 on motor means that it has 24mm diameter and 30mm length. D12 use 12T pinion gear. The outer diameter is 5.5mm. If you search on RC shop, usually it's written 5.6mm. 2430 motor uses 2mm shaft, same as 260 and 370 motor. I'll just use the stock pinion gear. You can hit the gear to soften it and then remove it using pliers, but I strongly suggesting you to buy gear puller to remove the gear like this. You just need to buy it once and it will be very handy in the future. Buy the steel one like in this video, don't buy the gear puller made by aluminium like this one because it cannot be used for small pinion gear. After that, put the pinion on the brushless motor. We need to push the pinion inward. I use a bench vise and a small socket wrench to push the pinion. You can use nut or something similar. If you don't have a vise, you can use C-clamp or something. After that, we just need to install the motor in gearbox. It's a plug and play. We just need a bigger bolt than standard 260 motor. I just use some screw from WPL body since I don't have the correct bolt. I think it won't be a problem as long as it can be tightened. Now we put back the plastic gear. Try to rotate it to make sure the movement is smooth and fine. Add some grease. You can add it as much as you want. We'll close the gearbox. We need to cut the sizes a bit so the 2430 motor which is longer than the stock motor can be installed. We install the gearbox. Notice that there is a white ring here, the position needs to be pushed back, otherwise it will interfere with the rotation. We rotate the tire to make sure there is no problem. After that, just screw back all the part. As you can see, there is still 6.6mm gap between the motor and the servo. It means you can also use 2435 motor which is 5mm longer than 2430 motor if you want it. Instead, actually, I suggest you to use 2435 motor since it will be produced higher torque. Now the ESC. Brushless motor use 3 cables. I plug the yellow cable to yellow cable because it happens to be the same color. The other two cables I randomly plug it because they are not the same color. If all the cables are not in same color, don't worry, just plug it randomly. More about this later. After that, plug the cable from ESC to the receiver. Plug it in channel 2. 
We got this receiver when we buy transmitter. Usually, the cable sequence from left to right is white, red, and black. Read the transmitter or receiver manual if you unsure. Then plug the servo cable into channel 1 in an order from left to right, the orange, red, and brown cable as shown in video. We plug the battery. Turn on ESC and transmitter. If you wrongly plug the ESC and servo cable, the system won't start and we need to correct it immediately. We test it, and it turns out the motor rotation is wrong. Therefore, we need to swap the motor cable. Let's shut it down first. Leave one cable stays connected as before and swap the other two cables. In this case, I leave the yellow cable as it is while I swap the blue and orange wires. We test again. And now it functions normally. If you still want to use the default battery, you need to buy a female T-plug or DIN connector. We cut the battery cable. Warning, don't cut in a straight line like this, because the scissor is made of conducted material that can cause short circuit. Instead, cut the cable one at a time. Insert the string tube if you have it. If not, just use electrical tape. Pay attention to the positive and negative side before we solder. Usually it written on the T-plug. We solder the cable. Finally, make sure once again the positive and negative cable position is correct. You can use the ESC and make sure the red cable to red cable and black to black. We need to make a cable pad, so I cut this body part. Don't worry, it will be hidden under the deck. I put the ESC under the deck, and I made a hole for battery cable. Because if you use large battery, it won't fit in the battery compartment. Unless, if you steal the stock battery, then you don't need to cut this part. Done. Now let's test it. This uses the stock battery, much faster than the stock motor. But I haven't tested for its top speed since it needs a long track. The drawback of stock battery is it has small capacity, only 500 mAh. But the advantage is you can still use the battery compartment and it will look completely stock. Now we test the power. I put the load around 1.2 kg. This is using 260 stock motor and you can see it cannot go uphill. Now I use 370 motor from dual speed gearbox. The torque is bigger but the speed is lower than the stock motor. Now I use the brushless motor, it is faster and stronger. If the 260 motor can take uphill, the brushless motor can still do a wheelie while going uphill and carry more than 1 kg weight. Just so you can imagine how heavy it is, the car is going backward because of the weight on you. If I don't break it, it will go back fast. The tire is even touched the deck, although I already propped the axle using paper. Conclusion: If you want to use B12 for drift purpose, then upgrading to brushless system is recommended. It's just that this chip ESC has soft start or punch mode, so it feels a bit unresponsive. Usually we can adjust the start mode or punch mode using program card, but I don't have the program card for this ESC. If you want better yet still affordable ESC, you can buy the Hobbywing Quick Run 16BL30. We can manually set the punch mode without using program card. But for an affordable ESC that we use in this video, it's still pretty good. We can use it normally, no cogging whatsoever. And it is still pretty responsive after it runs, it just feel a bit slow at first start. A warning, after you upgrade to brushless, be prepared to upgrade the other parts, especially the one that still use plastic such as the hex and gear on gearbox. And this is the first plastic part that broken, it is the wheel hex. Fortunately, we can buy the hex only that made of metal. 
The good thing is the D12 gear axle is already made of metal, so you don't need to upgrade too much. Anyway, this is a drift wheel and tire that made specifically for D12. It is a plug and play without need any modification. That's it and thanks for watching.